Okay, hi there. Welcome to a macroeconomics video. We, we've been discussing in class uh, the economics of sustainable growth, and I wanted to share with you a couple of videos on some of the topics and issues and examples uh, that we have been analysing and discussing. The challenge of achieving sustainable growth is one of the defining economic, social and political issues of the age. So in this first revision video, we're going to take a look at the concept of sustainable growth and identify some of the key environmental challenges linked to economic growth and also consider in the second video some policies, government interventions and approaches that can help to improve sustainability. So sustainable growth is a key concept. The word sustainable implies something that can be maintained over the long term. It's a word which means enduring, lasting and to keep in being. And sustainable growth is, in fact, the growth of national output that meets our needs, the needs of the present generation, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Linked to it is a really important concept, the idea of intergenerational equity. Which is essentially, equity is the idea of fairness or justice between generations. And one of the questions one might ask is, what kind of economic capacity what kind of economic capability are we leaving behind for the generations that follow us? So sustainability and intergenerational equity are two very closely related concepts. Well, uh, sustainable growth means growth that can be maintained over the long term. And of course, we know that in most countries that are growing, it doesn't necessarily have to be rapid, but it could be fast growth, it often creates significant environmental threats. Let's pick out a few of them. Economic growth nearly always generates additional pressures on our stock of natural capital and also the built environment. Waste is a huge issue. It's an enormous economic as well as social political issue. Britain is indeed one of the biggest producers of plastic waste in the world economy. I think second only to the United States. And we still export about two thirds of our plastic waste. This chart taken from the annual Marine Conservation Society survey shows the most common items of litter collected for every 100 metres of beach in their 2019 survey. And you can see all kinds of litter from caps and lids to wet whites and uh, glass and cigarettes. But far and away, the biggest single item or category is plastic or polystyrene pieces. And indeed, over a 12 year period, it's forecast that plastic packaging, if we go from 2018 through to 2030, plastic packaging will account for for you know, well over the half, a majority, two thirds of the plastic waste stream in the United Kingdom. By far the biggest single source of waste above uh, WEEE, -E, which stands for Waste, Electric and Electronic Equipment, which is about 7%. So plastic packaging, the waste that comes from both production and consumption is a huge environmental threat to sustainability. So too, global warming, man-made climate change, 2020, uh, widely now recognised as I think tied with 2016 as the hottest year recorded, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Growth can also lead to an extremely rapid depletion of our stock of natural capital assets, which in theory could be sustainable, like forests and water and fish stocks and biodiversity. So the loss of natural capital ultimately will hamper and, and, and hinder the ability of future generations to to survive and um, the loss of biodiversity is being highlighted by many recent surveys the loss of animal life basically challenging earth's ability to support complex complex life eight million tons of plastic ends up in the world's oceans i think every year how does it get there well there are multiple ways but most of it comes into direct contact with the sea from wind and dumping and also rivers. Rivers are a key way in which plastic waste enters the oceans. Uh, something like 90% of all plastic waste coming into the world's oceans from just 10 rivers, including including the Yangtze, which uh, by this graphic from Sister is far and the biggest single source. Uh, which companies have the largest plastic footprint? This is a kind of annual survey from the pressure group Break Free from Plastic. And they found that over 30, well, nearly 14,000 branded items found in 51 countries had Coca-Cola uh, as a recognised brand on the packaging. Coca-Cola is the biggest 
well, has by far the biggest plastic footprint in the world in 2020, followed by Nestle and Colgate Palmolive and then Unilever. So a lot of the world's big, fast-moving consumer goods sectors are huge generators of waste. Some countries are net exporters of waste. Other countries are net importers. Um, China, by the way, banned the import of plastic waste a couple of years ago. And that's actually allowed other Asian countries, including Vietnam, to expand into the sector that basically imports the waste to try to recycle it, you know, deal with it, including landfill. Of course, that carries big risks, environmental risks from pollution of air and land and maritime pollution. I mean, recycling waste can, can be commercially very viable, uh, often in countries where there's a limited amount of regulation. But think about this global trade in waste. Um, you know, wh why is it that countries are exporting their waste to other countries? And how can, that, uh, how can we re resolve that? Of course, key is to reduce the amount of waste in the first place. And then we get to climate change. According to data here from Bloomberg, from the, uh, the, the annual survey, the global temperatures, the av average increase has been 0 0.82 degrees compared to the 20th century average. Um, I mean, clearly this is a, a, a major, a major issue. Climate change is, in many ways, the biggest single market failure of all time and must be addressed. And of course, natural disasters, increasing volatility of weather patterns are linked to man-made climate change. And they are. Those people who argue they're not need to get out more. These are the 10 biggest natural disasters in the in the world from, 20, from 1980 to 2018. So it covers nearly 40 years. The earthquake in, uh, in and tsunami in, in Japan was the biggest economic cost of the natural disaster, followed by Hurricane Katrina, which was now 16 years ago. But, I mean, these are tens of billions of US dollars. And I think globally, over $200 billion of economic damage is caused by by um, natural disasters. Um, but, but that's the economic cost, the human cost, the social cost is absolutely staggering. And there are some examples here of some natural disasters in 2020 which claim lives, including the flash floods in Kenya. Many countries, of course, low-income nations, are less able to cope with natural disasters. They're more vulnerable, more exposed to the impact of climate change, including, including flood risk. According to research uh, published here, the weight of material output from human enterprise accounts for something like 30 trillion tonnes of weight created by human output. The biggest share of that is accounted for by urban areas, 11 trillion tonnes. Uh, and then you consider the trawl sea floor, eroded soil, reservoirs, etc. I mean, manufactured landscapes that are production of goods and services create and obviously many intangible services including digital products but I mean even they have a cost if you think about the the carbon cost of, of Bitcoin mining for example but the sheer size of the physical weight of material output produced in the world is absolutely staggering and there's a there's a big question about whether we do need to make a seismic change towards a less of a consumer-led materialistic society and then we come to some other key threats um, deforestation, of course, in many countries, including Indonesia and definitely including Brazil. Between August 2018 and July 2019, approximately 11,000 square kilometres, that's over 4,000 square miles of rainforest, were cut down in Brazil. 10% increase. So the progress made in previous years largely reversed under Bolsonaro's uh, premiership of Brazil. And linked to it, I mean, other, other deforestation, for example, is partly the, the result of, uh, of our growing appetite for palm oil. Global output of palm oil production was about 73 million tonnes last year. That's going to increase further. And uh, you can see the staggering increase in consumption, both for food and industrial use, prompting an acceleration of, uh, of land clearance and deforestation. And another really interesting one is sand. We'll finish with this point. Uh, this is another example of the pressure on natural resources that comes from fast growth. Sand and gravel is being extracted from the earth, as you can see from this chart, at an increasing rate. Something like 330 million tonnes uh, um, of sand and gravel were dug up in 20, 2019. Most of it, by the way, in the United States. 
And uh, again, this is another good example of the environmental challenges that come from economic activity. So sustainable growth, the challenge of achieving sustainable growth is one of the defining economic, social, political issues of the age. In our second video, we're just going to spend a few minutes thinking about some of the policy interventions, some of the policy options that are trying to improve the trade-off between growth and the environmental impact.